Ever since the Knoxville virus has surged through the state of Kentucky, retirement has become a thing of the past. There's no longer any time to sit back, relax, and yell at youngins on your lawn. But these old and, to put it nicely, crippled geezers want the social security and infinite bingo nights that they've rightfully earned. So here's how they did it. What's going on? I'm Odeology. I play games the way you shouldn't, and today I'm once again joined by my boyfriend Thomas. Hi. And today, we've decided to hang up our work shoes permanently. For this challenge, we introduce to you the story of Old Man Jenkins and Chris Kringle. Jenkins here has been old since birth and seeks revenge on the zombies who've interrupted his workless, pantsless days. And as for military veteran and suspected Christmas fanatic Chris Kringle, well, you can't really be sad anymore when all the kids you've given gifts to over the years are dead. Our objectives here were simple. Escape Louisville and find an unbothered place in the middle of nowhere to spend the rest of our lives. And the only rule was that both of us had to be there in the end. So, with poor stats fitting of old men, and looking forward to the endless amount of shuffleboarding and reading newspapers older than us in our future, we were off to our first attempt. Our journey started in Louisville's community center, a place which has certainly seen its fair share of old folk and dead folk. When we decided we were ready to leave, we found our way out of the building through the back exit, as it was probably not in our best interest to avoid the front doors and stepping onto the horde-ridden streets. Despite a lack of hordes out back, we were still met with some minor problems. Oh shit! don't go that way. Oh, yeah. oh shit! climb over the fence. Luckily, I made it over the fence, but Thomas did not, causing him to lose a few chunks of skin in his hat. Luckily, his second attempt was more successful, and when a horde down the street had sent me into a panic, he decided that would be the best time to describe the placement of his wound. Oh, it's on your neck? Yeah. He beat down an oncoming zombie, and we ran into a house which we were forced to retreat out of after a zombie shattered the window. There, that was the window that they were at, at, actually. Let's leave. This may now be a good time to mention Chris Kringle has gone deaf from his wartime excursions and old age. This meant I had to tell Thomas whenever it was time to leave a building and zombies were approaching us. Anyways, we ran through another house and grabbed what we could before exiting the neighborhood entirely and moved on to our main goal, which was to find a car. Luckily, down the street and past the house was a parking lot, which, unfortunately... Oh! 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 Distract them, Santa! What? was full of zombies. Despite sending Thomas to distract the zombies being kind of a dick move by me, it paid off as the first car I tried had a key and just enough gas for us to roll out of there. After driving for a bit and circling around back to the community center, we tried getting in a van which was in much better condition, but it was worthless as it was locked. We honestly wasted our time getting out, and zombies were now fast approaching, forcing us to attempt to loop around the building. We also tried a few other cars to the exact result that you'd expect. We ran to another parking lot, continuously trying car after car, and after hours of running, we were exerted and stuck in another parking lot with a crowd of zombies. I cut myself leaving over a fence, which was like the seventh f***ing time that happened, and we ran around a condo block trying every door. And when one finally opened... Just try one of the door. door. No! No! Thomas was bitten and therefore sentenced to death. That quickly shut down our first hellish attempt, and we moved on just as quickly to the next one. We were out fast, looted our spawn home and searched the garage for all necessary zombie slaying tools pretty rapidly. We snuck around the neighborhood and found a group of zombies having a sleepover. Too bad one of the assholes was awake. Why? Why are there a bunch of zombies chillaxing over the- They're coming. We found a taxi sitting in a driveway down the street, but its doors were locked and we didn't want to attract any more zombies than the ones already following us by breaking a window. So we left it behind and ran up the street and ran into a backyard and delivered our revenge upon the youngins. Sir, get off my lawn! We exited the backyard and fought some more zombies on the road, one of which scratched me after weaving my f***ing crowbar swing. Our search of a car continued and almost got me killed, but we ran down the road and attempted to just find a place to lose the zombies and relax. Just one singular moment. You know the front door's open. There's a house alarm going off, Thomas. I forgot that you couldn't hear Why stuff. Didn't it? Yeah. I forgot that you couldn't hear stuff. That is so fun. But you can't make this shit up. With every zombie in the neighborhood now approaching, we had no choice but to sprint out of there despite our exertion. We ran into a condo block in a house which thankfully didn't have an alarm to set off. We searched the place and quickly left, entering another house down the road which we were forced out of. Thomas's exertion got to be too much and he was forced to be halted to a walk. We entered a parking lot and I tried the first car I saw. But the amount of zombies caused us to lose each other. I'm gonna try and find you, but I'm not. <laughs> While I was trying to exit the condo area, Thomas was grabbed and bitten miles away, putting a painful end to our second attempt. Forgetting about the suffering that we just went through, though, Janky and Kringle were back, and with a sickle and shovel in hand, we were more than ready. Until I couldn't make it over this game fence. And if you hadn't guessed it, attempt four was no different. These highways are no joke, man. Oh my god! My god. Oh my god.
I blame the fence again. Anyways, all this was starting to feel the same. We ran out of our house, found a car, it wouldn't work, and we'd die. If we wanted this challenge to work, we desperately needed that one stroke of luck. A car with a key and just enough gas that wasn't surrounded by living nightmares who wanted to chow down on our brains. And when it came to zombies, we had to play smart and play to the few strengths that we had. And so, despite the discouraging previous attempts looming over our heads, we were on to attempt six. We spawned in a quiet neighborhood, which is a great rarity in Louisville. I grabbed two rolling pins out of my kitchen cabinets, which we had to put to use immediately on a zombie with teleportation magic. Well, let me stop. Oh, she just disappeared. We moved to the house on the left and got rid of the only zombie around. I found sneakers in a box and put them on, finally learning my lesson after vaulting 100 f fences and cutting myself on all of them. We looted the rest of the house, and we did what we had to to satiate our appetites. Ooh, margarine. An onion. I was able to get a grasp on our location in Louisville, and I can't lie, I was definitely feeling hopeful with how close we were to the quarantine wall and therefore the exit. We moved on again to the next house over, and after finding a way in, Thomas left me on my own in the kitchen. Here's uncooked. Wait a minute. Hey, Thomas, come in the kitchen. What? What? Did you turn the oven on? D did you? Oh, you nasty ass bastard! You gotta do what you gotta do. Anyways, despite the frying pans we now had as backup weapons, we continued traversing through the neighborhood. We came across a zombie taking a nap, but he had a few friends on guard duty. I missed the stomp. Everything's over. This house was rather useless other than a leather jacket I found, which provided me with some pretty good bite protection. Throughout the time it took to loot the house, the napping zombie had swapped shifts. Okay, time to take this bitch out. We avoided the next house due to some banging noise that could be clearly heard from outside, and just decided to cut across the street through the block. After moving more towards the street, making a plan to enter the closest house, something caught my eye. Car, 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 car. We moved up to the car and defended ourselves as necessary. The car was locked, but Thomas was happy to attempt a way in and search the glove box for the keys. I searched the trunk to find no keys, and of course the glove box was empty. My only hope was inside the house. They had to be there, and if they want- <gasps> Keys on the ground! Keys on the ground! Or there. That works too. You know, don't they say to never leave your keys on the front porch? Or... Except for house keys. Uh, anyways, I, I rushed to the car and slammed the W key about five times before I realized it. The car has no gas. Okay, so no gas was kind of a serious problem, but there was no way I was just forgetting about this car. It was in great condition and we had the keys to it already. So holding onto that mindset, we began our hunt. Our first goal was to grab containers. Annie would do. We needed anything to hold gas in. Thomas found a water bottle, and in our desperation for gas, he just emptied it on the floor. We went across the street and opened the house's window. Because I got the window open. <gasps> the traumatizing memories of what happened two attempts ago came right back to the both of us. In our crawling dash, Thomas somehow dropped all of his shit on the ground. Thankfully, he picked it all up relatively fast, and we ran down the street. I attempted in getting one of the houses, but it was no use and zombies were out for my blood. We continued running, I cut myself on a fence I hopped, because of course I did, but bandaged it as quickly as possible. We tried another house before seeing zombies inside and eventually made our way back to the houses that we were at before. We were met by a clueless zombie and one at the front door of this house, which Thomas was happy to take care of. I dumped out the water bottle I had previously picked up for the container and grabbed some bourbon from the house's liquor cabinet for disinfection purposes and absolutely no other reason at all. I left the house alone to look for more containers for gasoline or gasoline sources themselves only to find a peaceful zombie lost in her thoughts though i think she was pissed i broke her concentration she's coming after me i just shut the door on myself we went across the street and we're both jump scared by a very rude straight up bitch patients always go to kentucky what a terrible idea oh okay. where's that southern hospitality now ma'am and her naked housemate who just had an entire shotgun in her nightstand why is she naked Yo. shotgun Shotgun! Shotgun! Oh god, I need a cigarette. Oh, and yeah, Junkie here is a chain smoker. Anyways, we left the house feeling pretty happy with what we had found in there despite it not being gasoline. I mean, it was a shotgun after all. We conducted another beatdown in the next house over, which was the location I decided to clean myself off in. In the next house, we found a whole lot of nothing, but that nothing also meant no zombies. So we slept for a little while and prayed our old asses would wake up. Turns out we didn't. The end. Okay, so yeah, we woke up and continued our hunt for gas. Eventually, we got to the end of the road, leaving the only option being to head north through the backyard of this house. And we continued through another backyard until finding it. <gasps> a lone dash bull driver sitting in the driveway of this house on our right. If the bull driver had even a little bit of gas, it could be our way out. All we had to do was somehow spread out the zombies closer to the car. And so it began. We entered the house on the left and began to turn the place into a slaughterhouse. We lured in a few zombies across the street, and when the house was caked in blood and the zombies have dispersed enough, we exited. 
only to find out that the horde was still there. So we went for a police car down the street, and only a few zombies disturbed us. Thomas was able to siphon the gas from the cars I kept watch, and just as the zombies' numbers had increased, he finished. We moved back, slaying any of our followers, and we traveled the same route as we took to get to the bull driver, passing what you can't convince me isn't a f***ing corpse. I always I never, can never tell if he's like an actual scarecrow, if it's just like a zombie body that someone wrapped up. Thomas and I took a drink break and made our way to the original car we found. My sadness was increasing, all because of that rat I ate earlier, so Thomas handed me a bottle of wine, and that fixed it. We were unbothered on the way to the car, and were able to fill it up. After wildly swinging my pan at some zombie skulls, it was hard to ignore the horde down the street, so with the car filled up, with all we held, we entered and drove off. We found our way out of the neighborhood and checked a crash site for gas and medical supplies. Unfortunately, no gas was found, but I did find a jerry can and a construction worker. We got in and drove off following the laneless road through the woods, avoiding any large hordes to prevent damage to the engine. We were feeling free and hopeful. That feeling of retirement was like no other. Tire, get out of my way. Another arson house down here. I think down here should be- Whoa! Fuck. We forgot about the quarantine gates. Neither of us had any way to dismantle them, and in a panic, I drove through the woods. I found a nearby group of houses and took the gravel road surrounding them. After being met with another fence, I drove alongside it on the grass and was able to take a right into the city's train tracks. After driving a little while, I noticed a clearing in the woods, which I almost drove past. <gasps> Something the slow backup. Luckily, I had the sense to turn around and plow through the grass to it. Now, usually I wouldn't be so excited to see a highway in this game, especially in Louisville, but it was the main road. I floored it as hard as my old ass could and dodged every zombie in the way. We reached the first gate, and I opened it. With zombies on our tail, it was up to us to loop back around to the car. We were successful, and we drove only a few feet to be blocked behind a car accident. I panicked and drove into the military tent area, which was useless, so I turned the car around and just shoved the van out of the way. I tried to push the truck out of the way of the car. Like the, yeah, yeah. At the next gate, Thomas swiftly opened it, but had trouble getting back in the car. We quickly made a plan to just move the car to a spot he can get to, and he was able to get in, and that was the second checkpoint down. We drove up to the final point, and were blocked in. I tried looking for any holes in the fence, but we ultimately decided we'd have to pick up the barricades and move them. Except we couldn't do that without some violence. So, with shotgun in hand, he started firing. After what felt like ages, the zombies slowly began to clear out, and we slapped the rest with our pans and sprinted into the barricade and picked them up as fast as we could. We moved them out of the way, collected some more gas from the crashed cars behind the barricades, and went back to the car and drove off after filling it up more. Now out of Louisville, we had passed the first half of our challenge. After a few hours of driving and wrong turns, Our thirst started to become a serious concern. We only had one glass of bourbon to drink and were miles away from any safe buildings to stop at. Nightfall came, and as civilization grew further away from us, the zombies began to dissipate. I found an accident on the road, but this time, the cars had plenty of gas. I took out my gas can and quickly siphoned the gas. Before I could put the gas in our car, I had to bash this bastard over the head with my hammer. I was able to siphon more gas before a zombie decided to shoulder check our precious windows. After bashing in her and her husband's skulls, I realized our car was full on gas, and we drove off. After traveling for a while, it was cut off at the bridge, but I already knew the easiest way around it. We drove for a while, passing hordes and stragglers alike, especially as we got closer to civilization. Thomas and I swapped driving shifts so we could get around a little faster, and we attempted to find water sources in a small rest stop area, but felt as if it was too populated for us to maneuver around safely. Further down the road, we passed a stretch of burned and destroyed cars, which went on for a long while. Eventually, we came upon the Dixie Trailer Park, which we stopped at in hopes of grabbing something to drink to fix our ongoing problem, but the place was way too full for our liking. Oh my god! After getting a little lost in the trailer park and ramming a few zombies on the way out, we were back in the highway heading for Muldrow. Our plan wasn't to shelter up there, though. We didn't want to be anywhere near a place where zombies congregated so densely. Our plan was actually to head into the farmland and fields around Muldrow, where we believed the zombies would be few and far between. After having to avoid the trailer park and allowing our dehydration to continue, Thomas sped us through the highway, weaving through zombies quickly, showing off his skillful terrain. The long drive continued, and we found something promising. On the left side of the highway was a single lane road. We cut across the lanes of the highway onto the desolate street, avoiding the car which blocked our way. This little street went on for a while, and when we found an intersection with a dirt path to our right, we took the turn onto the dirt and once again avoided whatever cars blocked our way. This little dirt path in the middle of nowhere led just to what we were looking for. Oh yeah, it's somebody's house. Come on, Nothing. please tell me there's running water. There's a sink.
what I thought was a shed turned out to be a very tiny house. Finally, after a whole day and a half, we're no longer dehydrated. And while standing in the small kitchen filling up our empty water bottles, I took in our surroundings and really understood the situation that we were in. You know, actually, now that I think about it, this house, other than these two zombies outside, this house kinda, I don't know. I I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling retirement on this one. We beat down the zombies around the property and cleared out the ones in the woods, and that was the last of them. We found this house by accident, and it was our home. We were both honestly surprised that we had gotten this far. To make this house a home, we slept at 8 a.m. and awoke to nothing. There were no sounds of growling, no blood stains on the grass, and of course, no Kentucky meth heads to bother us. This was it. Jenki and Kringle had officially retired in the apocalypse. This challenge was honestly much more difficult than either of us could have anticipated. We killed plenty of zombies throughout our five attempts and ran as much as our old bodies could take, but in the end it was all worth it. We can now play bingo for the rest of our short lives and fulfill our retirement. So, if you guys- I retired. Not you. Hey, um, I just quickly wanted to say thank you to all of you. I mean, I know I have it on this end screen, but I think it's much more important that I say it. Thank you. The support on the last video was much more than Thomas and I could have ever anticipated. So, yeah, that's all I had to say. Just a simple thank you to all of you who subscribed, liked, everything like that, commented, all that good stuff. Thank you and have a good one.